hey, welcome to take 10 today. And wow, have I got a word from the Lord for you. You may feel battle worn. You may feel torn from limb to limb, internally speaking, emotionally, maybe that mental stress and pressure that you've been under. But the battle belongs to the Lord. And he is coming today with healing. He is coming today with renewed strength. He is coming today with his resurrection power to resurrect that in your life, which seems dead and done and finished and gone. Remember Jesus' final words on the cross, those powerful three words, it is finished. Jesus is the one who would say to you today, it's not over till it's over, but he is the one who has finished off problems, who's finished off pain, sickness, suffering, relationship breakdowns. He is the one who has finished them all in victory. And what's more, he says to you today, and he says to my heart today, that he takes captivity captive. Everything that has sought to pull you down, to hold you back from fulfilling God's best purposes for your life. He takes captive on your behalf through the victory of the cross. And then Jesus goes on to say, follow me, because where is he leading you to? It says that he leads you in triumph, in victory. And I want to share today from Isaiah 30, verse 19 to 22. And are you ready for this? O people of Zion, O children of God who live in Jerusalem, who live in God's presence, who are his kingdom kids, you will weep no more. He will be gracious if you ask for help. Where are you turning to today for your help? Are you turning to the Lord or are you turning to other sources that cannot help you and that cannot sustain you? He will surely respond to the sound of your cries. Though the Lord gave you adversity for food and suffering for drink. Hey, for some of you, it feels like it's been one problem, one issue after the other. It feels like it's been your food and drink over recent days, maybe weeks, months, even years, perhaps. But hear God's word today. He will still be with you to teach you. You will see your teacher with your own eyes. What did the disciples call Jesus? Rabbi, teacher. He is the one, the only one who can truly teach us how to live victoriously in life, who can truly teach us how to navigate every problem and every mountain until those mountains become plains by the miraculous leadership and teaching of the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus at work in our lives. You will see your teacher with your own eyes. Oh, do you remember that old song, Open My Eyes, Lord? I want to see Jesus in every situation we're facing today. Let's not be blinded by those mountains. Let's not allow the beauty of Jesus to be obscured or to be shut out by those problems that you are facing. Look up, look a little higher, look to Jesus. It says here, you will see your teacher. You will see Jesus revealed in your life. You will see your teacher, Jesus, with your own eyes. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Do you know my little boy, he said something just last week when I picked him up from nursery in the car. He spoke to me about a little friend of his called Hugo and he said, mummy, my teacher in nursery today said that Hugo didn't have his hearing ears on. And I thought, how true, it made me chuckle, but I thought, how true is that of us? And I asked Judah and I said, Judah, did you have your hearing ears on today to hear everything that your teacher was teaching you and everything that your teacher 
was saying to you so that you could listen and obey. And he assured me, yes, mummy, he had his hearing ears on. Listen, God, I believe, is asking us today, asking his children, do you have eyes? to see. Do you have your hearing ears on today to hear the word of release that God is bringing to your life today? The word that will sustain you, the word that if you will listen and obey, you will see God's victory in your life displayed. And uh, it goes on and it says in verse 22, then you will destroy all your silver idols and your precious gold things. That represents everything outside of the Lord that you have depended on. You will throw them out, the Bible says. Even the children of Israel, even their gold and silver, those things that can be so dear in our lives and precious, compared to Jesus, there's nothing that compares to him when we get a glimpse of the reality and the power and the amazing Jesus in our lives. And it says, you will throw those other things out like filthy rags. Do you know what those filthy rags are in, in the Bible? That what they're talking about there is actually menstrual pads. That's how rubbish, even gold, silver, anything, a, a job, your career, maybe it's a husband or a wife, anything that you depend on outside of Jesus can hurt you and can let you down. That's the fact. But God wants us to be not independent of him, but so dependent on him that as we are truly dependent on Jesus, then others and other relationships will be able to depend on us through Jesus holding us all together too. That's where the secret to real success, that's where the secret to, su to relationships is, that's where the secret to success in business, to God's good success. There's a lot of bad success out there in the world. My gorgeous hubby and I were talking about that last night. The world's success, success is not as God's success is. The world's success, fame, uh, money can be really destructive to the well-being in our lives, but God's success is good. It's good success as we find our success in the ways and in the words of the Lord as we listen and as we obey. And it says here that anything else that we depend on outside of God, we will throw them out like filthy rags. That's how filthy and disgusting, like menstrual pads, saying to them, good riddance. Good riddance to the past. Good riddance to all of those props that have held us up outside of Jesus. Good riddance to those props in this world. And hey, let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's welcome God's word into our lives that will truly sustain us and make us strong. I love this. It speaks to me as I read this of when we go through any battle, whatever we're facing in our lives, Three keys I want to give you. One, ask for help. God will respond so you don't need to react. God is waiting for you to come to him. He knows your needs even before you ask, but he wants you to come in humility. He wants you to partner with heaven today to trust him, to listen, put those listening ears on and to obey. Secondly, he promises us that he will turn sadness into gladness. That's his word for your life today as you trust him. Thirdly, although your trouble, it has seemed endless and unending and constant and it seems like it's come from every direction. It's felt like you've, your troubles have been like eating food and drinking water. But the Lord says he is the one who will navigate your problems. He is the one who will make the mountains low for you so you can run over those mountains, the Bible says, shouting grace, grace, shouting victory, shouting forth the miracles that God has to bring to you as those mountains come down. Every opposition that stands against you today, I declare by the word of the Lord, not by your might or by your power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And you are going to run again free. Dance in the midst of the storm, dance in the rain, because Jesus is with you and he's going to show you his power again. Get ready to receive today. I remember as we read there that you'll hear the voice behind you 
the voice of our teacher, the one who's leading us, saying this is the way. Walk in it, whether you're to go to the left, whether you're to go to the right. I remember my little Jude when he was about 18 months navigating the stairs. He didn't want my help, but let me tell you, mummy was right there. I was behind him. My arms were surrounding him. He couldn't feel my touch. He didn't want mummy's help. He wanted to show me what he could do. So often we can be like that with God, but he never leaves us. He waits for us to call to him for help. And I was right there though, surrounding him so he wouldn't fall back. So he wouldn't be humiliated. So he, will go, he would go forward, onwards, higher, up, upwards, stronger, and in safety and in security. That's how God, our teacher, that's how the Holy Spirit, our beautiful teacher and comforter and protector is with us. And as Judah's mummy, I was right there saying, well done, Judah. Take another little step, darling. You've got this. Well done, Judah. Mummy's with you. Your God is saying to you today, go on, just take another little step. You might feel afraid, but I'm with you. You've got this. I've got you. You won't fall back. You won't be humiliated. God is for you. Who can be against you? Go forward in faith. Your teacher, your God, the Holy Spirit is with you. The Lord will lead the way, whether to the right or the left. Listen and obey so you won't stray. God wants you to know that he is your teacher. And just like my 17-year-old, he's going into A-levels or the A-level equivalents that they have now uh, with COVID restrictions and everything going on. Um, and he's been working so hard. But one thing I know is as he's, he's been going into some of these exams, the teachers are always silent during the test. The teacher's right there, but the teacher is silent. Why? Because the teacher is allowing strength allowing the learning, allowing the growing within the pupil to happen, to take place, to be demonstrated. And uh, Joyce Meyer said that, and I think how, how gold, how wise are those words. The teacher is, if Jesus seems silent right now in your life, the Lord hasn't left you, the Lord is with you, the Lord is strengthening you. And the teacher may be silent in the test, but the teacher will never leave you. Jesus will never forsake you. So you can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man, what can any circumstance, what can any adverse situation do to me? I am a child of God. They are some of the most powerful, hell-shaking words that you can believe, you can stake your life on, you can stand on and you can declare in the midst of your enemies and in the midst of the battles Dependency on Jesus and God's word alone is what God is calling his children to. He's calling us to his throne right now. He's calling us closer in intimacy and in trust with him. No matter what it looks like, no matter how that battle rages around you, God is calling you and drawing you near to himself in dependency. God, I do not, just as God doesn't raise us to be independent of him, but to be dependent on him, on the word, his word, and on the Holy Spirit. So as parents, I was saying to my kids, I haven't raised my children to be independent, but to be dependent on Jesus everywhere they go. My little girlie, and in closing, Liella Gray, she had her first trip to the city to meet up with her friends uh, in half term recently. And she was excited, but the night before she was really nervous. Um, and I was assuring her, look, mummy will be in the city. I'd only be a little call away. And it was her little first step. And the next day, as we drove in to meet her friend, she was feeling a little bit afraid again. And we prayed. And I was able to remind her that, Liella, your mummy has never raised you to be independent. You're not going into the city on your own, but you're going into the city dependent on God's protection, on the goodness of the Holy Spirit, on the power of Jesus who's with you. Whatever you're going through, whatever, whatever you're facing today, go in the dependence, not in ind independence, but in dependence on Jesus and the Holy Spirit and in closing and say good riddance to all of those props all of those things that are not of God and that you have been falsely depending on that cannot sustain you and in verse 23 we read then the Lord will bless you with rain at planting time there will be wonderful harvests did you hear that 
multiple. God, and I declare it prophetically today, get ready for multiple increased and harvests in your life. In Jesus' name.